Here we are. Oh, Mooks, so, come and see these. Yeah, that's the cover of my itinerary today. Oh, lovely. <laughs> beautiful American lady who was one of the first to dare to do a plastic surgery to her nose. Uh, you can easily see they still look all identical, those uh, manufactured <laughs> noses uh, are not personal. I think they are very good uh, theoretically, but the result uh, is not so impressive. And <laughs> she was also injecting um, uh, paraffin to herself which is like wax uh, to push the cheeks up, which was a poisoning um, material. And so she was a beauty, but she had very bad uh, uh, problems afterward. But we will discuss about this later. So the exhibition won recently an award in New York in the last uh, few weeks. It, be, it came second in a bunch of exhibitions, fine art exhibitions all over the world. And this was the first room welcoming us with a, a recreation of Christian Dior by um, Jean-Paul Gaultier in 2000, um, mimicking a woman toilet uh, in the end of the 19th century uh, with this um, sort of, uh, hmm, how can I describe it, uh, augmented uh, back. <laughs> and uh, um, the two required uh, objects that one, lady could not miss in those days when going out wear a fancy hat and uh, an umbrella uh, instead of men wearing a stick uh, she was supposed to uh, lean on her umbrella even indoors uh, when moving gently elegantly around to a reception maybe by friends in the afternoon uh, you can contradict me if you have any witness uh, different uh, info, but this was what the art exhibition was telling us about Paris and London. Uh, in the background, you see the paintings of Boldini we're going to describe soon, but I want to show you again this beautiful dress that was very provocative. Okay. Uh, and Christian Dior used to say that this reminded him a lot of his childhood because he was overwhelmed by the fur coats over um, aunts and grannies. And he loved those uh, kind of fabrics already when he was a little, little boy. And that's something that represented somehow his souvenir. And this is uh, Lady Max, um, Charles Max. So ladies in Paris used to uh, use the surname of their husbands. Uh, and as you see, Boldini, Giovanni Boldini was a painter born in uh, Ferrara in 1842 who had a very long life. He died in uh, 1931 at age uh, uh, 89. So almost uh, the same timing of Monet, um, but he did not choose the extravaganza of uh, the uh, independent saloon, etc. He moved from provincial Ferrara to Rome and then Florence in his um, young days, became uh, part of the uh, Macchiaioli stream in paintings in Firenze and then moved definitely to London and Paris very soon. 
never coming back again to Ferrara anymore, not even for the funeral of his parents. Luckily enough, when he died, he had uh, a number of uh, um, pieces in his atelier that he uh, decided by testament to give to Ferrara as a present. And his widow um, did all the steps uh, to let us acquire this beautiful uh, ensemble of items which makes today a part of a very important museum, the Masari Palace, who is unfortunately closed since 2012, since the earthquake. So he married this young Florentine journalist, Italian journalist in his late days at age 86, and she was 23. Uh, so it's incredible that this young lady somehow respected all the all the will um, uh, of Boldini, bringing back to Ferrara uh, what we now treasure. And this exhibition also uh, put together a number of private pieces from um, private collections. Uh, and fancy museums all around the world. This fabulous uh, uh, portrait uh, pictures a young woman with short uh, haircut in uh, <clears throat> the early days in the 20th century. We will see the fashion moving from La Belle Epoque to Charleston days. Uh, and this is the new cut that this exhibition uh, gained through the curators, because we had many exhibits about Boldini and it was becoming a little boring for me to walk through them. But this one really uh, was striking because of the original dresses that they could bring in. If you see this woman is moving, maybe, Mm, just uh, stepping from a chair or something and the painter decided to enhance uh, uh, the shape of her hips uh, um, by letting her do this gesture of collecting the fabric uh, of this beautiful dress together. Uh, look that the shoes uh, are made with the same silk of the dress. She has uh, how do you say, um, uh, I, I missed the term. How would you call these strings that, that hold the, the dress? It's a um, shoulder strap? Yeah, or maybe. A, a strap? Oh, it's very narrow. It's not, it's not a bra, it's the dress itself, but sometimes yeah. one sleeve could, um, shift in a very sexy way and he was somehow asking to her posers to to let this happen to give <laughs> them more uh, allure more uh, sense of feminine attraction uh, look at the detail of the hand uh, she's wearing a turquoise beautiful ring so this detail also tells about her status. So she wears the surname of her husband, uh, this uh, Charles Max, um, I don't know who he was, but it's like a patronymic in Russian that makes uh, the name of the lady even longer. So it was another um, choice to make uh, the difference between aristocrats or high bourgeois and the common people. This is the first uh, hole and you see this is an original uh, piece from a um, tailor company in Rome called Tirelli. Um, you see that this model is on a step uh, compared to me, I would be higher up here. So 
So the lady who was wearing this was really tiny. And this is the average size of a human feminine body in the 1860, 1870. Uh, this enhancement in the back is called tournure. Um, it was something that was created by a tailor to help ladies uh, to have a sort of pillow on what be able to sit when a chance of sitting was coming because they had a crinoline underneath uh, the dress which was made uh, of uh, metal circles uh, to keep the dress uh, uh, open wide but they could not sit on uh, metal rings so this was also uh, implementing a little bit uh, the shape of uh, the physical parts that attract a man normally but also offering them a sort of comfort i show you a detail of the uh, fabric because it's beautiful and it's cut in a very unregular way you see this is overlapping the second layer uh, it's a sort of winter kind of dress for mornings spent at the horses races maybe at the bois de boulogne etc and um, in the paintings of Seurat uh, the pointiniste you can see the same type of clothes of dress uh, very commonly. This is La Grande Jatte, you know, perhaps this very famous painting. And uh, this is Denitis that we met a few weeks ago, um, describing this young, uh, beautiful woman with a winter coat, her mastiff dog walking through the Champs-Élysées, coming from the racist uh, tracks. And I would like to show you the detail because you can see some uh, um, maid or how do you say, what's the name of the young girl that were looking after baby children? Nannies. Yeah, nannies walking on a Sunday uh, among friends, girlfriends but she is on her own uh, with this lovely veil. It's a sort of complicated uh, uh, coiffure uh, and uh, that makes a sort of uh, big ribbon underneath uh, her chin and the uh, um, top of the coat is three layers very nice you will see something similar later on too so uh the idea of boldini and some of his concurrent uh, very talented colleagues uh, such as uh, um, emile blanche paul Eule, or a spanish one called uh, eduardo de la gandara uh, had an idea to make a, a, how can I say, a direct step into the fashion world that was starting in those days uh, um, renting hotels to show new models of clothes to the potential um, buyers uh, asking to some lady in the high society to wear them standing still not moving like a catwalk but just standing there with a background uh, you see of famous paintings of Boldini and La Gandara look at this I will enhance it a moment if you don't mind, I just get out of this and I want to show you better because it's really intriguing. So you see they were um, standing mannequin without head and some live uh, ladies 
And these are paintings of Boldini and the other famous uh, ones I just mentioned. So the idea is to create a sort of uh, privé in an atelier uh, to let you admire the dress, how it fits and so on, and to let you buy it. This combination of art and uh, industrial manufacturing, it was completely new and it stroke in this society, obviously having a great success. Therefore, some uh, um, magazines started uh, photographing all this and using the paintings of Boldini, these two, for example, as a cover, like uh, Vogue today. Huh? The only problem you will see was that the uh, magazines uh, had only black and white uh, colors available. So I'll go back to the presentation. Hold on. Yes, quickly, one, two, three. Tuck. There we go. This is the Hotel de la Mode or de Mode. Hmm? One of these spacious environment where these performances were conceived the first. And this is a couple of pages of these magazines, uh, female magazines such as Femina that still existed until a few decades uh, ago. And this is one cover. This is a painting of Boldini, a famous one. This is beautiful lady. He was obviously making um, his posers uh, a little bit nicer than what they were in reality, if they were not so good looking. But some of the ladies we will meet were extremely uh, beautiful, as you can easily imagine. The problem is that a stunning painting um, big as a pala of Guercino in a, an altar piece uh, um, was reproduced by the print only in black and white. So missing the pink, uh, the green, uh, the um, turquoise of these dresses, uh, the impression is not the same. This is uh, Lady uh, Madrazzo Fortuni the widow of uh, a famous uh, creator of fashion who acquired uh, a palace on the Canal Grande in Venice. Palazzo Fortuni is still there and is a museum today. And is um, um, planned to um, create uh, fabrics is still existing in Venice in the Giudecca on the other side of the um, canal. Uh, she was a widow, so she was dressed in black. Uh, but as you will see, she has uh, had enough of this uh, uh, mourning and she is ready to go back to life because this tiny detail in pink shows that she is kind of stepping into the life of the society, meetings and parties again. Uh, what I would like you to notice is this curious fringe, which is a new hairdo, a new haircut. Look at the details of these uh, hearing and look at the gesture. It's a fantasy of black, different black, colors or different reflection given to the black color uh, allow us to understand which material we have in front of us. She is pulling up a leather glow, a very long, elegant one. You see it's opaque because the leather doesn't shine as much as silk. And the little mantle she wears has some have, has some puffy 
little pom-pom in fur. And if you look against the, the background, you see the little hair in the fur. So she has some pom-pom here and there that make the blacks in this painting three different ones. Look at the white hand with uh, an emerald ring and another one we don't know, and this golden ring here, bracelet, sorry, etc. cetera. Um, and some of these painters, such as Seurat or Paul Le, dedicated some moment also to men's fashion. Uh, it's, it looks like more uh, as a caricature than a real portrait. This is Baudelaire par Paul Euleux. And you see uh, he has a cylinder hat. And this is the Chobby anonymous uh, passers-by by Seurat. Um, this is Boldini though. Boldini was uh, uh, a very successful painter. He acquired quickly the same status as his uh, rich customers. So he was uh, going out with them, uh, sharing the same style of life, going to theater with the gal, to ballet concert, uh, dinners out, everything. He was short and not particularly good looking, but he had a, an incredible number of lovers, some very famous. And he was obviously uh, dedicating his attention to this kind of customers, uh, rich ladies. But as you will see, he was, uh, I would say a little bit more talented in realistically portraying uh, men. This is a rich uh, uh, horses, uh, ponies uh, owner. He had um, uh, tens of them. And uh, this is a close up uh, look at his uh, um, special dress. We call it uh, uh, tuxedo or a frac. Huh? And um, the fashion for moustaches, uh, slight difference in color between his hair. He's a little bit overweight, uh, but he tried his best to make him look uh, um, dignified. This painting was not uh, on show, but we saw it in another exhibition. I love it particularly. This is a, a physician a doctor from London, Jewish, very Jewish, <laughs> and there's no doubt about it, uh, with his wife and daughter. But the um, human warmth uh, that he uh, emanates uh, through the painting is the talent uh, of Boldini's result, uh, even if he, uh, captures our attention with this one third of uh, the canvas empty. So we have a diagonal, a sense of movement. He has the uh, um, Legion d'honneur uh, given from uh, Napoleon III, a very special, uh, um, how can I say, title uh, that one could acquire for uh, special credits in life. Look at the watch, golden chain going in here, uh, um, tie and everything. And this is uh, someone you're supposed to know. Uh, have you ever heard of Giuseppe Verdi? Yes. <laughs> this is the most famous portrait of him. It was on the uh, banknote, uh, 1,000 liras for us for the Cates. So everybody in Italy knows this image, uh, thanks to Boldini. He portrayed uh, uh, Verdi more than one time because they were friends. And this is the maestro, obviously dressed for uh, 
directing an orchestra in a theater, possibly in La Scala in Milan. Um, I love this particularly too, too, because it's the box of colors, you see, the leftovers and, and brushes that you use to paint. And he did this uh, quick uh, uh, portrait of the gardener one day in his house in Paris. So we have this intense uh, chubby man taking a rest and smoking a cigarette, um, open trousers because it's too chubby <laughs> to work with it tightened up and a vest uh, just to be decent in public, uh, very special. Uh, that's in Ferrara in the collection. This is Paul Leleu, uh making a self portrait. Oh, sorry, uh, Paul Leleu portrait by John Zinger Sargent, an American painter that I like very much, somehow more than Boldini even. And this is a close up to show you that his uh, style of um, brushes is not as defined as Boldini, but the um, speed with which it defines uh, the features of Folleleu is uh, undeniably talented. And this is Degas. Uh, Edgar Degas uh, portrays uh, seldom men. Uh, in this case, we have three young men in a um, cabaret or a cafe chantant. Um, they keep on wearing the hat inside and they are the typical uh, uh, flaneur which is the new term that defines people who do not need to work to make a living. So this rich uh, young aristocrats uh, spend their time um, in clubs, uh, drinking, um, maybe taking drugs, uh, uh, meeting dancers uh, and so on. Look at this one, above all, who is almost uh, asleep, you see, with a very peaceful expression on his face. They were drinking absinthe in those days. Uh, and uh, this is another um, portrait of Paul Leleu um, by Degas again. Uh, very nice, uh, the color of this lemon here that changes a little bit, this gray um, background and this clumsy figure of this man who is not uh, especially attractive. And then in the same hole, they wear this little uh, winter coat and um, mantle. Uh, I show you the pictures because the photos I have are not uh, giving uh, enough uh, details uh, for you to appreciate. You should uh, understand that this is uh, a cut made by um, a very high level um, kind of uh, tailor that is specialized on fur. And this kind of dress has about 130 years. So the fur commonly in a cupboard um, gets rotten, produces insects that eat the fur. And it's a miracle that these two pieces have survived uh, so beautifully and so long. This is uh, an Amazon uh, suit, how can I say, dress. It's cut in a diagonal, as you can see, and it's really severe, né? closed uh, up to here, for a lady who wants to ride a horse, sitting on a side, because this is a special uh, saddle. 
you see, uh, it's from Hermes. Hermes starts uh, as a um, cure um, factory. And this is uh, the two uh, handles on which she would uh, uh, put her legs. Very difficult to ride a horse on an English saddle, very tiny already, and leaning on one side only. So the, the dress was cut in diagonal to cover better both legs. And uh, you had one, uh, I don't know the name of this, <laughs> one staffa only. So you cannot um, press the, the horse to tell you what to do. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so um, this lady here is an actress of theater and the first uh, um, movies. Her name is Alice Regneux and she was famous. She was a beauty. We will see her photos later. And she was uh, a very good uh, Amazone. Huh? Uh, she was even doing jumps. Imagine with a bust uh, um, squeezing your chest uh, to the point that uh, women often could faint uh, losing oxygen because they could not um, open their lungs enough. She was uh, jumping over um, obstacles with the horse, this beautiful horse, you see, and uh, sitting on one side only, very risky. She is not even pulling here, you see. Um, and she had this beautiful dog that was uh, accompanying her. And this is by Boldini. Eh? A few uh touches and the little teeth and all the details even a, a, a shaved dog because the fashion of the time required this type of uh, hairdo how can i say <laughs> um this was a dress in the art exhibition um made for young ladies entering for the first time in the adult uh, world, uh, so like uh, a special uh, dancing to present these new girls in the society, in the public society, also with the tournure, with bustier underneath, very tight, uh, with uh, whale um, bones or turtle bones. Unfortunately, animals start paying their toll very soon to the fashion world. And these puffy sleeves, as you see here, had a sort of armor inside to keep them open. And this is the whole full of very beautiful young ladies, all portrayed by Boldini. Uh, just this one first, uh, she is an American woman who married a rich uh, French uh, uh, diplomat and uh, she was portrayed by John Zinger Sargent uh, with this um, uh, elegant black dress, but in the opinion of the husband, uh, Sargent uh, portrayed his wife uh, in a disrespectful way because this décolleté was too deep and she was missing one uh, uh, string here. Uh, so the, this is the um, bozzetto, the rehearsal, and uh, uh, this is the final uh, version, but um, the name of Sargent and his uh, uh, popularity diminished uh, uh, because of this uh, critical um, comment of the husband, and he moved uh, to London, leaving uh, uh, the space to Boldini 
to acquire new customers. Um, this is the atelier of Giovanni Boldini in Paris. Look, he put a piano to make it look elegant, to give a sort of cultural <laughs> background to this gathering space. Here there is a, a painting, a portrait of a man to show that he had other things going on. And this woman has just come to visit uh, the painter, maybe to see how her own portrait was going. This is a big pastel that we will see soon. Or she's considering if it's gonna be opportune to have a portrait by Boldini. The thing is that the painter looks at her without her knowing. And he uses his malice, uh, his uh, non-perfect uh, respect for women to uh, tell us that she has lost her uh, aplomb and she has put uh, her hand on the hip uh, because she's thinking. You see, she is leaning on the umbrella like Berthe Morisot at the Louvre in another famous painting, but she is not uh, as elegant as a woman should officially look like in public. So she is completely in black over uh, this white pastel that we will see soon. Look how beautiful this girl is. And this is an oil, whilst this is the pastel. This is em, uh, Emiliana Concha da Ossa, a Chilean uh, uh, young uh, daughter of a diplomat uh, family in um, Paris that uh, Boldini portrayed uh, several times. So young ladies did not show uh, on the first uh, um, um, ball, uh, ballet, how can I say, ball uh, room uh, dedicated to their debut uh, with uh, deep uh, um, cut in the dress here on the breast, but with some flowers, fresh flowers appointed with pins. Uh, and uh, in this Mm, very big uh, dimension, uh, Boldini focuses on the hands. Uh, she is nervous uh, because she is uh, very emotional for the evening she is going to face, and so she uh, stresses her fingers, you see, as a young, uh, non so expert woman would do. So, very delicate uh, smile, uh, uh, naked shoulders, but not a very uh, deep decollete, uh, light color gloves. Uh, and she's, yeah, trying to do something to keep the pose. This is the sister, a bit more malicious. She's dealing with a large uh, um, fan. Um, with um, ostrich feathers, baby ostrich, and this uh, um, silk uh, green belt uh, makes a nice ribbon here to contrast uh, the pink of the dress and to give a certain um, evidence to the thin, thin, um, bust that she has. Look at the uh, black uh, um, gloves. These have uh, some interior in a different color here. It's a pity, I would like to show you, hmm, we lose a second, but it's worth it. <laughs> Oops. Allora. You see? The glove had a little hole to allow the movement. And the leather was completely cut to 
make this possibility easier, nicer. So she has another detail here. Boldini was um, uh, sometimes uh, choosing the clothes uh, himself uh, for his uh, uh, models because he was a sort of dictator. So he decided at a certain point to take personally his models to one atelier or another to choose the dress he thought would fit better the poser. This is uh, um, the Contesse de Leus, uh, another aristocrat uh, with a beautiful uh, dress. Uh, this painting is in Ferrara, but is one of three that he tried to portray better this woman. Look at this. Uh, normally, in a portrait that is supposed to go in your large living room, you face uh, uh, those who look at you. So this is the, the new. Boldini asks uh, the posers to look aside, which is a, a, an effort to try something different and to make uh, evident this beautiful nose in profile, the red color head match the green in the dress that he expressly had chosen. She has a fan too. The fan is kind of language for a woman in those days. And you wear jewelry over the gloves, the high gloves uh, you have here. Uh, this is another um, pose that uh, she was asked uh, to keep for another painting. Uh, and this is uh, um, a close up of it. I reckon Boldini loved uh, this uh, naked uh, neck and this part of her upper shoulders and the beautiful color of her hair matching, you see, the pink cheeks uh, and every detail of a young uh, face. But the final um, painting that was chosen by the sitter was this one, which is uh, out of the three, the one I, I like most too. Look at the ostrich fan, look at the jewel here, and this beautiful color for the glove that contrasts but matches the green. Uh, this one is called uh, the firework. It's uh, a painting that portrays uh, one young woman with the type of dress we have seen. Uh, but you see the hands are not even painted. Um, the kind of uh, brush uh, touch is very rapid, uh, uh, very vigorous, and uh, the background is not even finished. It's something that uh, makes Boldini appear close to the Futurism, but Futurism will come in the 30s. So we are still talking about the 80s of uh, um, 1880. This is the woman. Uh, Boldini has um, a preference for brunette, with dark color eyes. And these are samples of fun which were in the exhibition on show, something that survived another 100 years or more, incredibly. Look at this one, it's almost uh, golden pink. Uh, and these are the whale, uh, uh, bits uh, to hold the different nerves uh, for the feather. This one is again Alice Regneux, the actress we met before on horseback. But in here she is in the 
intimacy with Boldini. So she accepted an invitation uh, and she undressed. Uh, this is so um, transparent that uh, live you could see the uh, nips under this uh, very soft uh, light uh, veil. Uh, she is wearing a bustier, but as you see, her uh, expression is a lot more vivid. And once Boldini has captured this and the right arm, it doesn't have time to finish uh, the painting because obviously he wants to kiss and embrace this beautiful woman he has there. <laughs> so he leaves everything undone. And that's how we got uh, the painting today. This is the photo of those days of Alice Regneux. Uh, she's cute, as you see, um, very intense. And uh, this is uh, a bustier that came into the art exhibition. So uh, underwear starts being colorful. And that's the trick because men start knowing that underneath a white or pink dress, maybe there's something different. So this is uh, another pastel by Paul Leleu that shows us a woman um, undressing. And ev evidently the intrigue is by this part of naked uh, um, back and neck. Look at this. Uh, yeah. It leaves uh, something here and there and unsaved, but uh, you know where we are going to. Um, that's the same time when Oscar Wilde uh, writes uh, the drama Salome. And here, sorry, you have a um, um, proper uh, dedication from him to Paul Verlaine. So it's quite a circuit of people, very famous, getting together in uh, private houses, knowing each other's, uh, commenting. Uh, this is uh, another portrait by Sergeant, uh, sorry, by Emile Blanche of a young man in, uh, in England. Uh, it's one of the gay circuits uh, that Oscar Wilde had created in London. Uh, not obviously plain to be admitted because they were still going to jail for homosexuality, but it was uh, obviously um, well known to everybody. This is a, a stick that was in the exhibition um, from the Musée of Art Decorative of Paris. Look how beautiful this handle is with the Sphinx. It's from the Mannerist frescoes of early um, 16th century. And this is uh, uh, Robert de Montesquieu, uh, another very famous uh, uh, writer who owned uh, historically um, a stick that had belonged to uh, the King of France, uh, Louis XV. And um, this is a very elegant dress he wears with, uh, how do you call these buttons? Uh, uh, we call them twins, uh, gem gemelli in Italian. You, put them on your, um, on your shirt. I don't know that. Uh, and Cuff that's... Cufflinks. Okay, <laughs> grazie. It's the same turquoise as the handle. And I'll show you a close up of the gloves because they deserve. Look at the mustaches, the hairdo. This man is really elegant. Uh, very good looking. And uh, this is a sort of, um, we call it uh, mouse tail in Italian. 
the carabinieri have it on the trousers they wear in the uniform. It's a sort of a round thing that you can sew on a dress, but these gloves had it on the rim of each finger and it's golden. Look at this. And this is the hole to move uh, your breast uh, when inside. You see? This is the coda di topo. La coda di topo. And uh, questi sono i gemelli. This is a portrait of uh, two, two photos of uh, <coughs> Robert de Montesquieu. And you can uh, easily dig, it was gay too. Uh, with fur coats, uh, with the cat, uh, leather, uh, strange attitude, uh, very elegant and very keen of himself. And here we have uh, some of his uh, um, novels, uh, Les Hortensias Bleues, and something written by Whistler, um, James Abbott Whistler. Uh, who was uh, uh, holding a conference in London about Boldini. So they were not enemies, even if they were concurrents. They were friends. This is a portrait that Boldini offered to Whistler, which is world famous. Uh, everybody that thinks of Whistler today thinks of this very um, happy expression, very friendly, uh, this wild uh, uh, eyebrow, <laughs> and uh, he wears a uh, monocle, uh, one lens, and he's ready to go to the theater. He's kind of impatient, a little bit scruffy. This is how people recall him, um, waiting for Boldini to be finished to go. He has his coat on, his arm ready, and this is again la légion d'honneur. Huh? This red dot on his suit is this distinctive uh, prize from the king. Um, Whistler is very famous for this painting of him portraying his mother on a rocking chair. Very, very well known all over the world. And uh, this is again uh, uh, Robert de Montesquieu par uh, Paul Eleu or La Gandara. This is the sketch and this is the oil after the sketch. But as you see, the painting of Boldini is way better. Look at this. Huh? This is a big difference. <laughs> okay, so let's go on. Uh, in this hall, there's, there were other um, portraits of men, but there's this beautiful lady too. Uh, we don't know the name. Some of these uh, sitters uh, are just known by the initial of their name. So Lady SM, Lady TR something, because they wanted to stay anonymous. You see how deep uh, this decollete goes, and she has uh, fresh roses on one side. Um, the legs uh, are not... Uh, uh, so uh, attentively described uh, as much as the upper part of uh, this portrait. So this is what Boldini does when he becomes uh, like a routine uh, um, chain production of such paintings. Some ladies are very similar. Uh, the pose varies uh, little. The hands are always nervous, very um, lively, and uh, the shoes most of the times are matching the colors of the dress. That's, that was very important in that society. This one is Donna Franca Florio, uh, this famous uh, um, beautiful woman of a 
uh, as much famous uh, Sicilian billionaire who owned uh, a tonnara, a factory of tuna fish uh, that became uh, historical in Italy. He made a drama out of this portrait because he felt that his wife was too naked. Imagine Sicily in the 90s of uh, um, two centuries ago, <laughs> um, very conservative. So uh, she uh, had to change uh, the painting that was added of some extra parts uh, not to show her so naked but you see the lady is kind of beautiful uh, this is the husband of colette this famous french um, um, she writer and uh, he lives out of the richness of the wife is a little bit overweight very elegant uh, uh, coat uh, um, gloves uh, very clean nails. Uh, we cannot, I don't have any close up of this, but I can guarantee that it shows he was not a worker in the fields. He was a man that had a manicure almost every week. Um, this is a close up of his red uh, cheeks, uh, maybe a little bit of wine or high blood pressure and some funny details. See, this hat is not fitting him completely, which shows that Boldini was not completely um, respecting him, but was kind of wanting to mock him a little bit. And uh, this is another gay um, representative of the enclave uh, in London by John Zinger Sargent. Sargent uh, um, decided to portray this guy with this huge, beautiful coat, uh, winter coat, but the painting required a few months and he mm -hmm. ended up uh, wearing it in June and July and he lost a lot of weight because he was dying under this so He lost coat. a lot of weight because he's dying. And this is um, a famous journalist uh, called journalist Sam. Called Sam. In uh, there's an echo. Somebody maybe has um, the open. If someone mutes the mutes the volume. Oh, Sarah, maybe is something resounding. I don't know if you can help me. Yeah. So this guy has. Um, a uh, different type of hat now. The fashion has changed. That's what we call bombetta. I don't know in English uh, the term. <laughs> He's provocative. So he wears the stick upside down. He has uh, a leather, uh, uncolored uh, modern boots and the uh, trousers are wrapped around. You see, like we say a fisherman that goes in high water. It's, it's very typical in Italy to mock someone for wearing this kind of uh, trousers. But the um, raincoat, it's kind of Burberry with this beautiful uh, uh, silk inside. And he has two red uh, points to match né? his uh, smart uh, uh, look. He was a, a caricaturist on newspapers in uh, France. And this is a very elegant lady that goes visit uh, again in Boldini's uh, atelier. This kind of sofa comes again and again in his uh, uh, paintings. And you see the lady keeps wearing the gloves, keeps wearing the hat, even indoors. And uh, she wears uh, the umbrella on her lap. Um, Rosa's uh, a veil over her face. All these details have changed a little bit the hairdo, but it's complicated to wear everything. So if you take off your hat, then you need a, a toilet again to fix it. So they were staying dressed. 
This is another famous Italian actress of the period. And this is Cléo de Merode, Etoile uh, de Ballet uh, uh, Paris, de l'Opéra. Again, she's posing because she knows now how to pose. Uh, uh, photographers were there already. The clothes becomes a little bit more comfortable. There's no more bustier worn underneath. And this uh, strange uh, um, collier is now uh, different than the kind of jewelry we have seen before. It goes tight around the neck, uh, uh, suggesting something more sensual, and then going down deep in the decollete indicates, uh, obviously, <laughs> where the look of a man should go. Uh, this is a typical pose of photographers until the 80s of last century, uh, 1980. In New York, I have a friend, he used to put her, his sitters in the same pose in his uh, um, atelier in, in New York, down in the Bowery. And this is uh, Sarah Bernard, a famous actress. Um, Maybe you've heard her name before. She was very beautiful and young here, but Boldini chooses to look at her from behind, just to enhance the fantasy of this uh, shirt. Look at the many buttons here over the wrist and um, uh, something different, something lively. And this is again, Cléo de Merode. Uh, the étoile of the Ballet de l'Opéra that we just met. And you see that the painting of Boldini has become almost uh, informal. It's nearly abstract. The background is disappearing. There's just a, a brush touch or two to describe her body uh, that is kind of transparent here. And she has this sexy pose. Uh -huh. Look at her eyes. This is a, a lady a little bit more mature that asks uh, uh, Boldini a portrait, but she cannot count on her beauty. So she shows all her jewelry instead. And uh, this is a um, bozzetto, just a, a drawing to prepare a portrait of a young woman in her atelier. You see the, um, cup, um, the coat uh, has three sides of color. How can I call it? Um, but what I want to attract your attention to is this bust here, can you see it? It's a bust that portrays a cardinal and this belongs to Bernini. It's a chalk, so it's a preparatory for a marble bust that Bernini actually did in Rome. And this was in uh, possession of the Uffizi in Firenze. At a certain point, when Boldini became so famous, the Uffizi asked uh, him a self-portrait to put it in the Corridoio Vasariano, along with uh, tens of other portraits of important uh, Italian artists. He was not just uh, uh, extremely pleased uh, to be required uh, uh, this uh, self-portrait, he decided to provoke the Uffizi asking something in exchange. And he focused on this bust of Bernini that the Uffizi decided to give him, uh, incredibly. Uh, he used to position this bust in his um, bedroom to attract uh, the young ladies uh, in to show them the bust of Bernini. 
And then in the back, uh, I know it's very little, but there's uh, again the same painting we saw before of uh, Franca Florio uh, with the decollete. Um, here we go. That's the a coat similar to the one that the girl was wearing, still original. And this is another evolution in fashion for a, a, a night um, event, a, a ballet. You see the colors become more varied and the shape of the dress uh, is less uh, tightened. So you have uh, some details here. You have paillette now, you have velvet flowers and a little bit less uh, constricting uh, bustier. Uh, this is a close up. And this is another beautiful young woman sitting on uh, one um, chair in Boldini's atelier that has this beautiful swan head. It's the style of uh, Napoleone um, the first. It's called imperial style. Huh? And you see that the, the arms are naked now, no more gloves, a large uh, décolleté and uh, uh, a little bit of a fur here. Look just a detail uh, to show you the armchair. And this is a dress that was made uh, more recently in the um, 60s uh, of last century by um, Lucchino Visconti for one of his movies. Uh, uh, the actress that used to wear it for the movie had not the sizes of ladies in the 19th century. So they had to do it larger. It doesn't show because it has this large contrast in color, this ribbon, but uh, she was not absolutely able to fit in the bustier that we saw before. So this is uh, another fantastic original dress instead. Uh, we are already at the verge of uh, the century, at the end of La Belle Epoque. And this is made out of thousands of beads that have to be uh, knitted uh, by the hand on the entire surface of the dress. Look at this. No? This is a painting of Boldini that offers the same idea, a contrast uh, ribbon in the back to enhance uh, the shape of uh, uh, the model itself. This is Eulalia um, uh, Infanta de España, uh, the daughter of the King of Spain. Um, possibly inheriting the kingdom. Eulalia was not a very good looking woman, but Boldini did his best uh, to portray her. And he decided also to change the dress she had chosen for the portrait from black. He took her to a fancy uh, couturier in Paris and decided that this purple was matching the green of her eyes. This is Lady Marlborough, um, the um, mother of this child who was the cousin of Winston Churchill. And she broke up with her husband. They divorced uh, soon after this painting of Boldini was made. Look how beautiful this um, way of portraying mother and son is and how new is the look that let us see the parquet uh, the 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 floor and the walls it's kind of um, rotating type of uh, vision that has to do with the fact that boldini was aware of the fact that, that uh, picasso in those days was trying to let uh, people see two different different 
plans on the same painting, the cubism. Um, he never obviously uh, joined that stream, but he was kind of trying to change the way he was focusing on his sitters uh, before. And these are two things uh, with the same color in leather. This is a, a cover of a book of Marcel Proust, uh, who was one of the gang as well, uh, one of the many books he wrote, uh, a saga, and this is Du Côté de Chesuan. And these uh, shoes have to do with this novel because um, down uh, La Recherche du Temps Perdu, he quotes uh, a woman, a married woman, that the main character is falling in love with. And meanwhile, he describes uh, to the woman his uh, souvenir, his first souvenir of her, the first time he saw her, telling her what dress she was wearing. She, not understanding the curtain up of the main character, answers him that uh, she remembers the dress, but she remembers a quarrel with her husband because she had um, decided for a pair of black shoes instead of pink that matched the dress. So the husband sent her back into the house to change them. Uh, this kind of aristocratic uh, um, women traveled a lot with uh, a number, an incredible number of suitcases uh, of Louis Vuitton already uh, kind of brand. So this rich woman here had uh, like 19 uh, uh, suitcases when she was um, staying uh, at the best hotels in Paris. And one suitcase was just for shoes. She was traveling with some 90 pairs of shoes uh, along with herself. Uh, this is uh, a um, portrait of uh, an anonymous woman that fits pretty much uh, the, the story of uh, Marcel Proust and the shoes uh, that we just uh, saw. Look how beautiful she is, this velvet, uh, carnation velvet. And these are new um, dresses in a different style now more softly falling down and less tighten. If you look at this, you see that there's no bustier underneath anymore, just a, a belt and some uh, decorations in new materials now. Um, this is another sample. This is a belt that goes down like a piece of jewelry. There is also glass decorations on the rim of the fabric. Look at this. And these are new types of paillettes with plastic decorations on top that make like a jewel. And this is again Gladys Deacon, this American beauty that decided to try plastic surgery. I want you to notice a couple of things. The jewel on her neck points directly to the breast and she has a fan, but now the language of the fan closed. Uh, uh, it's really a cliche, like uh, waiting for someone to pick her up. And she has uh, stockings, uh, uh, which is a new thing. Uh, the short, the, the dress is shorter, lighter, and then underneath she has uh, the heel visible. You can see here the transparent uh, stockings in black. And this is La Signora in Rosa. Uh, uh, again, uh, uh, a Chilean. Uh, uh, member of that uh, diplomat's uh, family that I mentioned before, that were friends with Boldini. And uh, this woman will stay forever 
as beautiful and young as we see her in this painting. This was the advantage of being portrayed by Boldini. Um, she has some untouched um, eyebrows in the style of Frida Kahlo. Eh? Ladies were not uh, shaving or pulling her hair in those days, but she looks beautiful too. And the shoes are made with the same silk of the dress. Then uh, again, uh, Boldini creates a new term to define um, a woman who is uh, fatal, who is uh, um, risky, a type who is very attractive and determined uh, like this one here. He calls her diva. Diva is uh, a recreation of the term goddess in Latin. And this is the way a lot of gay friends joke uh, about <laughs> today too. Uh, look at her face. Huh? She's really uh, serious, uh, new type of hat now the kind of uh, uh, type you see at the horses races, at Ascot even today and so on. And she holds, uh, see the umbrella, like a, a performer, a magician, something like this. Uh, this one is uh, Marquise Luisa Casati a young and crazy woman who married a very rich and much older man uh, in Venice. And then she um, eventually came out with her, um, sorry, um, different type of sexuality. She was a lesbian. And she was going round in Venice with uh, this beautiful uh, Doberman uh, uh, dogs. Sometimes she had a live uh, python wrapped around her body and two black, uh, almost naked servants uh, walking with her. And she was using Belladonna to put in her eyes to um, make her black eyes look bigger because this uh, kind of poisoning uh, uh, drop was dilatating the uh, iris. Uh, so she is a kind of a crazy character. She is the one in the photo in black and white that I posted on Instagram this uh, week and she is the one we will see soon in the final paintings of Boldini. Then we had a series of uh, beautiful hats at the exhibition. This one uh, unfortunately asked uh, the life of a uh, bird of paradise uh, just to make a small uh, uh, decoration for your hairdo. And uh, this is again uh, baby ostrich uh, feathers uh, colored with uh, veil. And then uh, other interesting creations. Uh, look at this. Um, it was a room full of uh, such hats. And these are some sketches uh, by Boldini. This woman is beautiful with her light color eyes and another one in a vivid uh, portrait of this one but this is Paul Le, for instance uh, so even uh, Boldini's colleagues were very talented uh, at the time it must have been difficult for a woman to choose by who uh, be uh, forever portrayed uh, this is a Russian uh, expat uh, 
uh, in Paris um, with her two uh, little dogs walking in the Bois de Boulogne. You see, she wears uh, stockings again, and she has now this long uh, collier um, necklace in the style, the pure style of Charleston. She has short hair, uh, feather here. I'll show you. Yeah, beautiful. Huh? The Pekingese dogs is fantastic. Just two brush strokes and is there. This is a famous couple, the Leidig uh, um, husband and wife uh, asked Boldini a double portrait but they divorced before it was finished. So the painting stayed in the atelier of the painter for the rest of his life. And we acquired it in Ferrara at the end. And these are the clothes, uh, the dresses that were in the final hall. Uh, the Japanism comes and this Asian kind of, uh, bag now covers the body of the woman without marking any more feature. Hmm? You see, it's, it's really easy to fit in a sort of dress like this, no matter if you're skinny or a little chubby. These are beautiful uh, uh, dresses that belong to Ida Rubinstein, uh, a, a Jewish uh, Etoile of the Russian uh, ballet of Bangst and uh, Diaghilev, uh, who came to Venice uh, too. And uh, Boldini um, uh, tried desperately to have an, op an option, uh, an opportunity to portray um, Ida Rubinstein, but uh, she decided for another painter, so there was no chance for him. In this art exhibition, there was also this beautiful box here with uh, this uh, ampoule of perfume. That is the first moment when a uh, um, couturier maison decided to attach uh, the name on uh, an essence, a perfume artificially made expressly for the maison. So we have uh, the Maison Puire uh, that creates uh, the first branded uh, perfume. Now it's very easy to think of the step uh, that Christian Dior uh, or everyone else uh, uh, have made uh, after to, to make money in the in industry of fashion. And this is Ida Rubinstein by uh, de la Gandara, uh, beautiful painting. And unfortunately, uh, our famous Boldini had no uh, chance to portray here. This is a Delphos um, creation by um, Mariano Fortuni. It's a famous dress that became an icon of. Uh, uh, this kind of women, Ida Rubinstein, uh, Luisa Casati, and so on. It's silk, tiny, tiny um, folded on itself. It's like, uh, how can I say, mm, a plissé. Mm? And uh, you look at this beautiful, at this beautiful, um, uh, buttons uh, and decorations that make uh, the dress uh, fail properly with the gravity. In Venice, in the Museum Fortuni, there's still some samples of this kind. Um, this is uh, Ida Rubinstein in a famous uh, um, piece. She performed the martyr of San, martyrdom of Saint Sebastian. So she was dressed as a man, a Roman warrior. And that's how Boldini wanted to portray her. 
but as I said, uh, she did not uh, like it. Uh, and this is the moment uh, uh, photographers uh, jump in this uh, scenario, changing it uh, forever. Uh, this is again uh, Man Ray at the very beginning with one of these famous actresses. And uh, even the debut uh, ballet um, or ball night uh, is different now because the young girls wear completely different dresses. I remember in the 60s when I had birthday, my mom was putting me a velvet uh, kind of dress of this kind. And you see short uh, stockings, very um, unexpected. These two uh, sisters are, uh, again, the daughters of a famous rich family that Goldini was working for. You see the Charleston kind of uh, uh, hairdo with short hair. And the fashion is... Uh, dramatically different. But this is the final painting that closed uh, the exhibition with this triumphant and incredibly strange uh, Marchesa Luisa Casati uh, that used to create her own uh, hairdo in this one with uh, peacock feathers, for instance. You, you can see the eye has this uh, uh, especially um, dilatated uh, um, iris and uh, here there's a lot of color. It's a very uh, unexpected uh, change in Boldini that has uh, about uh, 86 years when he paints this and it's the same time when he marries the young journalist uh, aged uh, 23 um he is ready for a, another step into modernity the painting is completely um informal it's materic uh, it's full of uh, color here and in some parts here there are drops uh, of leaking color so if he had lived uh, a little bit longer, maybe he could have met uh, an abstract version of his uh, uh, style of portraying this incredibly beautiful women. So I, I hope you liked uh, this uh, <laughs> um, promenade through the exhibit. If you have some questions, uh, I'm here. I want to um, point your attention on the fact that she has a colorful lack on her nails. Yeah, you see, this is the first time we have it on a painting. She has red, uh, um, I, I don't know the name, <laughs> I'm missing some terms. Uh, polish on her oh, nail polish yeah on her nail okay so thank you for being um, with me another watch. time i hope you enjoyed um, i'm not sure i'm gonna make one next weekend because we try to go out uh, with a small group to the jewish uh, cemetery but you will see my newsletter during the next uh, few weeks. Uh, okay. Uh, um, I have a question for you. Have you ever yeah. been to the Boston Public Library? No. Um, John Singer Sargent is a, a local son, you know. Yeah. And he's got a mural on the third floor of it that's astonishing. It's all religious themes. Oh. But not just one, re it's like, Catholic and Jewish and and um, yeah. Islamic and and um, oh. Roman and it's amazing. I, I, I must look for it. Yeah. yeah, I I know he was Jewish. Yes, I and don't, I don't even know whether he was Jewish. I don't know yeah, that. Yeah, Zinger, Zinger is a typical uh, uh, is, but, Jewish surname, like the sewing machine. 
and uh, it was gay uh, too, obviously. And uh, he was so incredibly talented. We had an exhibition in Ferrara years ago with a fantastic ensemble of paintings of him. Um, it was really a very nice uh, discover. Him and uh, Sorolla, this uh, Spanish painter. Unfortunately, the exhibition about Sorolla was stopped uh, abruptly by the earthquake. Uh, so yeah. The first shake, uh, the uh, um, people who had lent the paintings uh, stayed waiting, and the second shake, they said, "No, no, no, let's uh, have back all the uh, the paintings." And so it closed uh, too soon, unfortunately. It was a beautiful, beautiful exhibition. So. Maybe I'll um, consider going through it again one day. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Thank Grazie. you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice uh, evening. We Ciao. Will.